Hello and welcome back everyone. If you're new to the channel, thanks for joining me. This week I'm going back into the archives about 10 years, going back to a time when uh, I was asked by a school teacher to do the old frog and toad book characters, but except for out of wood and in a tree, reading books together out on a limb. And in case you didn't know, my name's Jeff Moore. I am the Northwoods Carver. And thanks for seeing what I saw. Well, the start of the new project, 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, this is the lamination process. These are the blocks of the frog and toad. I don't have any images until I get to the finished carving. Unfortunately, I didn't have any. I dug these up. Um, dug these images up out of my Google photos or something. I, I had like millions of old pictures, so I decided to throw them throw them together for this slideshow. Um, yeah, so I I was asked by the um, there's a teacher that actually um, sponsored this whole thing, so it was pretty cool. Um, she basically gave me permission to do whatever and uh, so yeah so this tree is you, you this is a tree okay this is a like a like an oak tree right and I couldn't find one that looked anything like this and, and I needed to go and hunt one down and then ask the people if I could cut the tree down in their yard man I mean it was it was crazy I'm driving around looking at trees that are dead saying hey if you, do, if you don't mind I'd like to take your tree down and they're like get out of my yard <laughs> <laughs> they really were you know and then finally I spot I spied one off the highway and, and I drove in there very gingerly and was on my best behavior of course and asked those kind people would you mind if I took the tree down I mean it looks like it's dead and it was dead it's been dead for a while and they said yeah go ahead so I took it down and wrestled that thing onto my trailer just picking it up and moving it was very difficult it was like jacks like you know remember the little game jacks where you throw the jacks on the ground bounce the ball it was like that trying to move it it was it just wanted to do weird things and all I had was an old tractor that was before I had my Minneapolis Moline reconditioned and painted yellow and here's my beautiful wife up in the crotch of the tree a beautiful bluebird sunny day she is my world, and I take beautiful photographs of her whenever I can. She drives her crazy, but I can't help it. That's just how I feel. She's like uh, my muse. So anyway, um, you can see on the bottom there's a steel plate that's lagged and glued to the bot, or actually it's epoxy to the bottom of that plate, and then the plate is lagged to these big beams that uh, will be submerged in the ground and uh, still taking pictures of my wife apparently and this is an example of one of our sunsets just like a random day you know and uh, soon enough the torching has to begin I gotta break out my big propane torch which is so awesome I mean that thing is super duper powerful and will just I mean this this tree was dead but it was kind of wet um, so it took forever to burn this thing I mean there's a lot of surface area and I knew what I was gonna do afterwards I'm, I just love burning as you can see <laughs> the man child inside of me yeah that's awesome cool shot you know and uh, it was getting to be dusk and but the camera, it was weird. It would show it to be darker than it was when it wasn't. And uh, then it was. There you go. So they're kind of mixed up in here. Um, so, yes, yeah, so when when the uh, I braise the whole tree, I just braise it. I get it to be like a golden, you know, a light golden. And I just come back to it. And it seems to burn a little easier when you just do it in layers so I'll just go around a few times and uh, it took forever to burn it and uh, I didn't have any problems with that I like burning stuff and playing with hoses I don't know I like squirting my dog 
with my hose you know my garden hose just she just thinks it's the I don't know she's crazy so garden hoses and flamethrowers those are my things um, yeah good thing you got to be good at one to counter the other there you go so you can see I'm having too much fun um, I like blasting stuff and uh, I really like uh, the, the effects, especially when it gets a little darker, so much sparks and it's beautiful. Makes for good photos, but uh, there's an awful lot of them, I know. I just grabbed everything I could from that photo thing and here they are. Yeah. <laughs> what a man-child. Total man-child. Oh my gosh, <laughs> how embarrassing. Get one more for the Gipper. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So this is like my second time around, and uh, still burning, having fun, wondering. You know, I, at this point, I already did the homework. I already knew where I was going to sit the um, the frog and toad. I had made little places for him. Then I had to go up and measure and make sure that the frog and toad were ready. And here is that tree after I sanded the whole thing down and not only that I emphasized the black in the divots with spray cans with spray paint so you can see it's a little darker now and uh, I just uh, I sprayed it on before I sanded just to give it a little more depth here you can see one of the completed um, frog and toad dudes um, on the now sealed that was the effect I wanted so the the coloration everything is just what I wanted and you know this whole time I'm fitting these guys thinking yeah this looks pretty dang cool you know and now I'm thinking oh man I gotta paint these guys and I do not know what to paint them or how I know I wanted it to be that tacky you know late 60s early 70s you know they the academic people back then wore the worst clothes ever. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, you know, with the tackiest, most, I don't know, disturbing colorations and, you know, stripes and checkers and, you know, just like weird. All the patterns back then were kind of weird. Um, so I'm kind of, I want to be random as I can be where they still look like they could be part of this book so yeah and now I'm getting um, a few ideas about where to uh, you know what colors I'm gonna paint another thing is, is there's only these two pics of me painting I could not find any other pics so I told you it was random talk about random colorations now here they are both done up in their tree ready to be shipped actually they're mounted permanently they will never come off unless I mean somebody would really have to be doing something stupid um, so yeah there you can get a good view of of my guys and uh, I kind of took images right from frog and toad um, and then I just kind of winged it for the rest of it and as you can see I, I'm roughly six foot tall and when we get it back up we'll back up a little bit camera you'll be able to see how, how big it is in total it's pretty good size and that is a piece of oak so also getting the, that um, tree to stand up without tipping over because there's a lot of weight going one direction oh my God, that was fun good thing I had an old tractor to, to help me out there's no way I could have done it without something heavy duty to pick it up so yeah there it is nice and neat those are old beams or that like um, for the there's a company here in Portage that actually uh, sells them and they're the, the guardrail beams and once they, they replace them every once in a while and when they do they bring them back to their shop and they have piles of them back there and I just go and buy them for not much um, it was pretty cool and then I just bought the steel in Portage as well shout out to my portage stores here we go time to unload let's get her done
Let's get her done. Heave! Yeah, we got her done. We got uh, a guy that came by from a local business. He had this, this case with the extended forks. And man, that thing is so awesome. So much better than my old tractor back at home. And it lifted this thing like it was nothing. And it was pretty heavy. Um, so uh, we're just trucking along, keeping it safe so that it doesn't tip. Um, you know, it, it wasn't super as, as rigid like it was one solid piece, but it was very, very strong. You could see it flex a little bit. I was not concerned. So the idea is to bury the beams under the ground. So I do this quite a bit so we don't have to pour concrete. We'll just drop this thing down in the ground and then cover the top and then there's usually mulch goes over top and uh, you know to cover the plate and whatever for uh, just for you know so it looks a little more natural and uh, so that's that's how tall it is when it's on the ground or when it's level to the ground I should say so it's not super tall you know it's it's something the kids can hang out on and that kind of thing but uh, as you can see it's 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 we've took a little time and leveled it off nice and now we're just admiring our work and just getting ready to backfill and uh, that's the, the nice lady the teacher that she bought that with her own money and donated it to the school now that is a darn good teacher we need lots more like her I'm, I'm not gonna just I'm not gonna say any names I can do it. I'll say my name. My name's Jeff Moore. But I'm definitely not going to give her name out. Um, but without, without, you know, I don't know. I just think it's kind of weird. Anyways, so here's the frog and toad in their final space, in their final place. And uh, it was, it was cool. You know, was, I had such a bluebird day that day um, before we left. Clearly, those pictures were pretty amazing. And then when we got up there, it got cloudy and overcast, and it made for some really cool um, photographs because in that light, that everything just became very photogenic. There was no glare, and it, you know, it, it was uh, a wonderful, a wonderful experience. Everyone there was very helpful, and my wife was up there posing, as you can see, reading the books. <laughs> Uh, she used to do the same thing to our kids, except for not in a tree, not normally. And uh, maybe William, I don't know, maybe William read a book in a tree, I have no idea. Um, I was too busy um, doing this kind of stuff. So here's the walk up uh, from the tra trail. There's a, a pathway that leads from the school parking lot out to this way back in the back 40. Um, and there's this like a nature walk they're starting it's like you know for the kids I think the kids run track on it but it's also designed for people on their lunch break if they just want to go for a walk and this would be along the walk which is really cool and uh, we had talked about doing other things as well but this is all they got from me thus far so like I said this is 10 years ago and a lot of carvings have come and gone through my shop um, just too many to even mention but this one at the time you know I didn't carve this to be like a masterpiece I carved this to be something that was very thought-provoking and you know it wasn't an under carved too horribly it wasn't over carved it was just I wanted to I didn't want it to be too refined I just wanted it to look a little rough but yet it got right to the point uh, without being too crazy um, detail wise because I you know I gave the lady a, a nice break on the price so I wasn't gonna you know throw the kitchen sink at this thing but you as you saw the school there and it pans around back to the trail as you were walking past and then you just look to this side and where is it there there it is superb I'm, I'm really surprised that uh, 
I had normally I'll take a video at the end of something but you know lately since I've had the channel my YouTube thing um, I'm videoing everything I'm editing everything it's it's really cool it's really fun and uh, I just want to say thanks again to everyone who sat through this video with me and thanks for seeing what I saw everyone